Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to talk through navigating in Blender. This series of videos is going to be for people getting into Blender for the first time. We'll cover through all the basics you'll need to get started in Blender, things like navigation and what different sections of menus do, and how to interact and change objects. We'll do this in a series of short videos so they're all clearly labelled so you can easily search for them. And in each video we'll cover the bare basics while going on to things that are slightly more advanced so that as you continue on your journey through Blender, you can improve the way that you use these different elements. In this video we'll cover navigation in Blender, but before we do that I just want to mention what you're going to see the first time you come into Blender, just so we've got everything covered. So the first time you load Blender up, you'll be greeted with this screen. You might have a different picture here. This is for Blender 4.3 and you might be using a later version, but almost definitely look near identical to this. You've got your new preferences that you're going to be able to set up. I would recommend leaving everything as it is so it looks the same as what most people are going to be using. But if you have used a previous version of Blender, you can import your previous version preferences clicking this button, which means once you've got this set up once, you don't have to do it every single time you install a new version of Blender, which would be really tedious. So we're going to click Save Preferences, and then we'll have this splash screen. This shows us our different options of what sort of space we want our Blender to be using. I normally always start with General, but you might be starting with Sculpting or Video Editing if that's one of your uses. We also have an Open button to open any previous file. We can recover our last used session. And if we've got any recent files, if this is the first time using it, this will probably be blank. You can select one of them here. We're going to go into a general file, which you can do either by clicking here or clicking off the splash screen. Just quickly, if you do ever want to get the splash screen back, just come up to this Blender icon at the top, click on it, and click Splash Screen, and this is quite a nice way to get into your recently used files without having to go through different files to find them. So let's get onto the navigation. And when you come in, you'll be greeted with this screen, which has quite a lot to it. We'll cover this whole viewport layout in the next video, but you've got a light source here, a camera here, and an object here, which depending on what you're gonna use Blender for, some of these might be useful to you and some of them might not be. Now in terms of navigation, we've got three major navigation tools. You are going to want to be able to pan, which moves us side to side, orbit, where we move around an object, and zoom in. Now there are several ways of doing each of these things, but we'll start with the most basic ones, as I always will with these beginner videos, and we will go on to some more complex methods, which give you a few more options in case you want to come back to this at a later date, or you've practiced those basics and you feel confident with them. So to pan, we very simply hold down our shift button, you can see my keys in the bottom right hand corner, and then depress the middle mouse button and keep those held down and that will allow you to pan either side. Effectively, this is like sliding from side to side or up or down. And if I just use this camera to represent where we're viewing from, you can see this keeps us at a relatively constant distance from the objects that we're looking at as we move side by side or up or down. The other option to this is to orbit. To do that, we just click the middle mouse button, nothing else, and move around. And this allows us to keep a constant view of the center of the screen as it's set up. So if I come over to here and do the same thing, it is rotating around the center of the screen. And that means that you want to have your object focused in the middle of the screen that you want to move around. I will come back to that as we move on to the slightly more advanced options, but that's the basic tool. The other thing that we can do is zoom in and out, and to zoom in and out we just rotate the middle mouse button wheel, rotating up to go in, rotating down to zoom out. And with that you should be able to move around your scene very quickly and easily getting to the spaces that you want. Now let's move on to the slightly more advanced options that give you a few more choices. The first is that in your top right hand corner you've got this gimbal. And this shows you all the different axes. We can see the axes on the ground for X and Y, and they're color coded. Now what you can do with this is click on any of these axes and it will rotate your viewpoint to you seeing perfectly in that direction. So if I hit the X button, we'll be coming straight from this X view. You can click it again to go to the X minus view and you can see there is a minus on the gimbal. We can do the same thing with Z and so on. Now if you hold your mouse over any of these, you will also notice that there are shortcuts which we can use to also move around. For example, if I want to see in the Y direction, I can just press one on my keypad and that will go into that view. Or for example, Z as a top down view is seven. And again, we can use that if you have a number pad on your keyboard. If you don't have a number pad on your keyboard, I would really recommend getting a keyboard with a number pad. They're gonna be very useful for a lot of functionality later. However, here there is an alternative and that's that we can press the tilde button. That's the button above tab. 
and that gives you the options to move into different views as well. For example, we can come to the bottom or the left or the top whichever we choose to. So that's another option and usefully it means you can keep your fingers where they normally would be on your keyboard. Finally, if you do want to go into one of those views and you don't want to come up to the gimbal, and I would recommend you start trying to use this because I'm in a really bad habit of not using it, if you hold down the Alt button on your keyboard and then hold down your middle mouse button afterwards and drag to a side, it will move to that view. So for example, I can move each way just by dragging into each of those views. I can go top down or bottom up just by dragging and moving my mouse while holding down the Alt button. The other thing we can do is if you're already moving with your middle mouse button and you hold down Alt, it will snap you to the closest viewpoint you've got as you move around. So you can easily come to this sort of 45 degree angle view as well should you choose to. So that's by holding your middle mouse button down and then clicking Alt, whereas if you hold down Alt and then click your middle mouse button and move, it snaps straight away. The other thing that you might want to be aware of in terms of zooming is that you can press Shift and B, and that will give you this view on your cursor, and then you just drag to create a space that you want to zoom to, and that will zoom you into that view. So if we come quite far out, Shift and B, and then do something like there, it will zoom us into that view so that's a really nice quick zooming option. The last thing that I want to show you as part of this navigation video is a preference that you might want to change depending on what you like. And that's related to the orbiting. I'm just going to pan over to the side and we're going to orbit around and we can see, as I mentioned before, that this is centered around the middle of the screen. Meaning this cube that I've got selected and you can see outlined in orange is going to move from left to right as we orbit around. Now there is another option here where instead we can have Blender pan around any selected object. I'm just going to duplicate this object with Shift and D, then I'll press Y to keep it on the Y axis so that we can have two objects here. We will go through all of those options in a future video, but you can see here as I orbit round, they move from side to side because we're moving around the center of the screen. If you want to change this, you can go to Edit and Preferences, and we have a lot of options here, but don't get concerned about this. I use maybe 1% of these to change anything. It's not something you need to really deal with other than a few minor exceptions. We're going to go to our navigation and we've got this option here where it says orbit around selection. We can also change how quickly things orbit and stuff like that. But orbit around selection with that turned on, this will automatically save that preference. If you don't want to auto save your preferences, if you just come here, you can turn off auto save preferences and then you have to click save preferences. You can also load factory preferences so you can always change anything back to what it originally was. So we'll close this. And you remember before we were orbiting around the center of the screen, if I click here, now this will navigate around that cube. So any cube that I click on, or any object that I click on, will be the point where our viewport navigates around when we orbit, if we have this option selected. So here we're orbiting around the cube. If I come to Edit and Preferences and change that off, then now even with something selected, we orbit around the center of the view. And that's gonna really depend on what you prefer. So I would suggest trying both of those out and seeing which one you find a bit more natural to you. For the next video, we're gonna have a look at our viewport settings. So if you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, the bell icon, so you get that notification when the video is up. Or if you're watching this a bit later, there's a link to all of the playlists where you've got all these Blender basics in one long playlist, so you can go through them in order to get yourself acquainted with Blender as quickly as possible. So I hope to see you for that next video. Have a great day, guys.